Now, I wanted to get into the software a little bit. So here we have um, here we have the web interface, and here I have the smartphone interface, and um, it, it just seems to to work pretty good. Uh, one thing that I like, like for example, in the app, I just told the window blinds to open. In the background there, you can see there's this green block that slowly fills up as the blinds move. And here you get a, a zoomed in view where it uh, will actually animate this on screen. And the cool thing is, you know, if I go in and interrupt it, so if you have multiple people using the same client, or sorry, multiple clients connected, um, it's updated in real time between them. So if I'm closing the blinds, someone's trying to open them, it's not like I lose a sense of state or anything like that, uh, which is kind of nice. Everything gets translated uh, to the system. One thing that's interesting is on the app, um, you know, it's it it has all the cool stuff built in, right? So here I am controlling an LED strip, and I can actually control this quite granularly. And for my liking, that's a little too bright. Uh, so here we go. Maybe I want to turn it on, turn it off. Uh, very responsive. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I hadn't even pushed this button until now. I kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of having fun playing with this. So, you know, you can make it custom. You can maybe even script something uh, where your media player uh, outputs its waveform to some sort of script you write, maybe in Python or something like that. And you could communicate this directly to the Luxon server because you can establish listeners. And you could really have uh, music going to the beat and truly have a party going on. That's pretty cool, actually. I'm, I'm really impressed by that. Now, I want to know if that updates over here. So, where's my LED RGB? Okay. Live demo time. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, you cannot... Uh, I'm actually quite impressed with how that works. You can't see it on screen. Or Actually, yeah, you can see that switch. Just in the, the cube at the very bottom here. Um, but I've even seen the pointer. I've even seen the pointer in the this kind of rainbow gradient uh, color selector at the top. Uh, update. And and it works both ways. Very neat. So I, I'm I'm pretty happy with the type of software that's built into this. That's, that's really cool. Um, so in here, I don't expect you to be able to read this. In fact, they um, they have a demo server on their website, so you can just go install the application. You can find it in Google Play and uh, the iOS store, and you can connect to their demo server and maybe mess around. Um, uh, so this is all the lighting control broken out by room. Uh, you have an entertainment section uh, where you can uh, play different music in different rooms. I d I'm not really into all that sort of stuff. I don't really understand what sort of APIs it uses and what sort of products you can use. Um, and different entrances, uh, you know, open, close your gate, garage door. Um, very configurable. I've tried adding some stuff here myself and you can, it's very free formed, right? Like you're not, you're not stuck. It's like, do you have blinds? Do you have a doorbell? What do you got, right? Um, so one thing I want to try, I had this working Awesome. Shh. You know, I wish, uh, I'm going to ignore that. My camera isn't very good. This is a little sketchy, but I'm going to simulate a doorbell press. And it worked a second ago and I failed. So what happened was I hit the ignore button for the doorbell and it's got a timeout built in, which I'm not going to go edit right now, but basically if you hit ignore, that means that people are repeatedly banging your doorbell. It doesn't bother you, but it popped up the live feed on my phone. I need to demonstrate that again because I really like that. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about about the blind control is I was asking them, um, you know, how, how, how does that work? Most blinds in the market just use a regular motor, um, probably a stepper motor, I'm guessing. And you just program in uh, what direction you want the motor to go for what duration of time, which is fine. I use a servo in my case, and I use a web interface. Um, but the person I spoke to on the phone demonstrated for me that it's no problem to do uh, 
you know, TCP, uh, do HTTP GET to my blinds to open or close them, change the state, and also um, I can even configure my blinds to send out, say, UDP broadcasts of their state, say every minute or something like that, and the server will have a listener configured um, to pick that up. So it's always pulling the state of, uh, of different items in the house. So, let's see if this timeout has passed. Very cool. So, the application, <laughs> my camera's pointing at a garbage can. Awesome. Um, so, the camera's pointing at, uh, sorry, the application is listening uh, for doorbell requests. Um, my phone actually makes a doorbell noise. I get a live video feed. Um, I can have a voice communication if I had a SIP camera hooked up. And the cool thing is it's got nice little built-in stuff. Like I can uh, toggle the porch light on or off um, when someone rings the doorbell. Or you could even script that, I guess. I, I have mine scripted like that. Uh, and you can do actions like open the door, um, which triggered something on the demo unit. Um, that's me. That's a little above my pay grade, but, uh, you know, maybe my mom's stopping by or my brother and they needed to borrow something. No problem. Ring my doorbell. I'll see it to you. I'll let you in. Very cool. Very cool indeed. You can tell by looking at the web interface, it emulates, uh, the phone application quite well or vice versa. Um, that's nice to have a sense of consistency. Um, now, there's, I have a few issues with this. Uh, the web interface works good on a desktop PC. Um, overall, I give it a fail, and uh, I let the Luxon support team know about this. Um, there's really a few reasons. Number one, it doesn't scale well on mobile, which is something they could easily uh, fix um, with a bit of CSS and JavaScript. Everything looks really, really tiny on a mobile phone. Um, and that can become a bit of a problem. And you might say, why? Well, if you don't own an Android phone or an iPhone, which I understand is the minority, if you have Windows Phone, if you have a Blackberry, if you have some other product, um, you have to use the web interface. There's no application. Now, Blackberry can run Android applications, so I'm actually in luck. This is a Blackberry device. I'm running the Android app. It works no problem. If you have Windows Phone, uh, you're, you're definitely out of luck. Uh, another issue I have with it that I haven't reported is on my tablet here, I actually can't even log in. There must be some weird JavaScript going on where I can't type anything into these text boxes and it just doesn't work. Um, and like I said, it's really small. That's the default view. It just doesn't scale for mobile, which can be fixed in development. Um, the issue I have with this is the web browser I have on this tablet actually has one of the highest HTML5 compatibility scores according to HTML5test.com. So whatever they're doing is, I'm assuming is non-standard because it isn't universally compliant. I was hoping to log in with my tablet and use this interface on a touch screen. I thought that would actually be pretty cool. And unfortunately I can't do it. Um, that's okay. I mean, it's... Well, sorry, it's not okay. I, I hope stuff like this would work. I'll be happy to give them feedback on that. Overall, I found the software very easy to use, very easy to configure. Um, I didn't have much issues auto-discovering um, auto discovering things. Um, let's see what this button does. I've never pushed it before. Uh, okay, so maybe another minor flaw. Um, is that the Luxon Weather Service, which I don't know what that is, I could only presume, is only available in Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. Um, this is a European uh, company. Um, the reason why they sent me this demo unit is because they're branching out into the U.S., so I'm hoping there will be more uh, weather updates to come, or <laughs> software updates to come. Um, once again, I just really like the software. I'd use it. I definitely use it, and it builds, beats having to build all this stuff from scratch. Uh, I, th I feel like even just the LED uh, switcher kind of kind of won me there, you know. Um, very cool.
In fact, I want to turn that back on. <clears throat> One feature it has is Save Scene, which is pretty cool um, because you can customize stuff on the fly from the application. So maybe my watching TV scene, I don't like the light dimness or something like that. I can go through, edit the config on the fly in that menu. Uh, in this case, I was in the lighting menu. And when I'm done editing it, I can save scene. I don't have to go to my PC and edit stuff over and over again. It's not fun. One thing that's quite interesting about the software, and I really do think that's the selling point behind the service, is the record a task feature. Um, one thing you saw was the config tool, uh, which looks very complicated as it should be because it does a lot of stuff. Um, you probably spend a lot of time in here getting stuff set up, and then hopefully you don't come back here very often, or else that means that you didn't do something right or they didn't do something right. Um, <clears throat> but you don't have to go in there to do interesting things. Inside of here, I can schedule a task. I can record a new task, and let's say that's me going into lighting and changing the uh, uh, LED strip to blue, and it didn't change in real time while well, I'm in record mode, and we'll flick it on and off and turn it there, and what else might I want to do? Maybe I'll uh, close my window blinds or something like that. And I stop hitting record. And as you can see here, that it recorded 10 different commands with a start time that I'm gonna set for uh, about a minute from now. So, um, yeah, let's do that. And I'll save quickly before the minute rolls over. And I'm kind of curious to see what happens. And it turns out that I set it for an hour from now, not a minute from now. So that would explain a lot. Um, but anyway, uh, point being, that's still pretty interesting um, that without going into the software, I can, or sorry, going into the config software, I can schedule different stuff to happen. Kind of cool. One thing I wanted to check out on here was setting up a thermostat, and I didn't have enough time to do that. I know that it completely supports it. I just wanted to see what the web interface looked like. Um, I think you can find more information about that on their website. Um, I'm going to turn off that light for a sec. I just wanted to demonstrate how responsive the dimmer is. So this light right here, this is just an LED, but it's meant, you know, this is their demo case, their sales case. Um, so I just wanted to point out, as I slide this slider, it updates really quickly. Um, that's good. I'm curious if that's something you can actually get with a wireless experience. Like I know what I mean is I'm wireless from here to my router to the device. That's pretty quick. I know with X10, um, I'll be in wireless to the lights themselves. There's a bit of lag there. This unit's designed to be a wired system. I, um, I'd, I'd really like to know how well this performs over, say, uh, Z-Wave versus a wired solution. That isn't a comment about Luxon. It wouldn't have anything to do with them. This is more a question about protocols. Here's a little tick down to the alarm arming. This is saying the alarm is armed. And I'm curious if the presence sensor is hooked up. So it looks like the alarm just tripped. I'm, I haven't actually tested this before doing this on camera. So I'm assuming this is the alarm going off inside of the house. I'll point out that at no point am I getting a uh, notification to my device or to the web browser other than other than in the app and on the web browser the alarm is going off. 
What I mean is there's no pop-up saying, hey, your house is being broken into. I have to assume that it just wasn't programmed that way for this demo case. It's, I mean, come on. It, if I get a live video stream popping up when someone rings my doorbell, I'm, I can guarantee, I, I don't even question that the application supports uh, some sort of alert when your alarm's going off. Okay, and then I just got home again.